Hello, I'm Nathan P. Butler, author of A Saga on Home Video and host of From the Star Wars Home Video Library here on YouTube, and this is Star Wars Home Video Year by Year. This time we take a look at 1984. Now that's not a huge year in terms of Star Wars outside of home video, but it's a big year for Star Wars on home video. Um, beyond that though, just to give you some context, this was the year that A New Hope first premiered on CBS, on American television. Uh, this was a year that another of the ongoing Star Wars publishing lines, the newspaper strips, came to an end. It's the year that Caravan of Courage and Ewok Adventure, or whatever you want to call it, the name tended to change, Caravan of Courage and Ewok Adventure, The Ewok Adventure, that was aired on ABC. That film, by the way, did get theatrical release in other parts of the world, just not in the U.S., where it was basically just a tele-movie, as it's called, T-E-L-E-M-O-V-I-E. -E. And... Something Little Me loved very much, 1984 was the premiere of the serial known as C-3PO's. Look it up. There was a Star Wars serial. I remember it being pretty good, but I was also like five. Don't trust that. The primary thing that made 1984 a big year for Star Wars on home video was it was finally time to see The Empire Strikes Back released in full on home video. It took five years for A New Hope, from 77 to 82. The time span shrunk a little to go from 80 to 84, just four years for The Empire Strikes Back. So here in 84, now that the trilogy is done in theaters, at least with new premieres, here we have another film hitting home video. So of course, The Empire Strikes Back premiered on all four of the major formats in the U.S. at the time. We have VHS release. Notice it is getting away from the drawer cases. We're not just in a regular slim slip cover for a VHS cassette as we are used to seeing VHSs in for the rest, really, of their life cycle here. And alongside this, we had a beta release. You might say, well, wait a second. Those look exactly the same. Only the spines will tell you the difference here. And in this case, it's a sticker. We are at the point now where beta isn't a strong enough format to really merit its own small packages. And the further we've gotten away from that, which really the last time we saw that was in 82, the further away we're getting from any kind of specialized packaging, at least the drawer boxes, the drawers themselves were specially manufactured for beta. Here, it's basically just a standard VHS case with a little bit of extra padding on the inside to fit the cassette so it doesn't fall out. So yeah, beta not doing so hot at this point, though the market would still continue in the US for a while, but VHS is slowly gaining dominance at this point. Beyond those formats, of course, we also had a one disc extended play Laserdisc, CLV, which again does mean time compression for The Empire Strikes Back in the US. And we also have a CED release, which is this one here for the US. I would note we had someone in the comments make a comment about the US CED of A New Hope a while back saying that rather than standard time compression like we see on Laserdisc that instead it was that scenes were actually cut. I can't speak to it. I don't have a working CED player. I can't manually check. So take that uh, as a possibility of how they managed to time compress these without maybe using regular time compression. I've only ever seen discussion of time compression for Laserdisc and CED discussed together if CED is mentioned at all. It's usually Laserdisc or Laserdisc and CED, not CED by itself. So it could be that generalities for Laserdisc are often being applied in those discussions to CED. Suffice to say, they're both shrunk down to be able to fit on discs that only allow an hour of content on either side. But that's Laserdisc, you know, with that common time compression. And then as I showed here a moment ago, this is the CED. But notice here that just like the 1983 A New Hope release, we have a blue caddy, but a white frame. And I would note, I've had some of these come through that have been sealed. And yes, still the white frame to it. So for whatever reason, in probably lower supply as the format was already starting to dwindle a little bit, um, they started combining the color schemes here for CED. And of course, we saw The Empire Strikes Back released in other markets. This show's focusing mostly on U.S. releases and, again, hitting foreign releases when it's relevant. But just to kind of give you a sense, Australia had their own version of it with kind of cool packaging here. The U.K. had their own clamshell packaging. And yes, we're still releasing a VHS and Beta and Video 2000 along with Laserdisc over there. This is actually one of those Video 2000 copies, which, again, is this unusual type of cassette, at least unusual for the American mind. And yes, the Japanese market did get a VHD release, again, two discs in two different containers inside two different slip covers to make one full film, not time compressed. 
There were some other things of note in 84, though. Sticking with Japan very briefly, that behind-the-scenes double feature got put out on VHD as well. Uh, there are only two more VHDs for us to look at, and then we'll have seen the entirety of the Japanese Star Wars VHD line. There just wasn't a whole lot to it. And speaking of that double feature, remember that the making of Star Wars got releases in the U.S. in 79 and 80. We'll see more of them later by itself. But SPFX The Empire Strikes Back never got an individual release in the United States and tended to always be packaged with the making of Star Wars. Well, in other regions, that was not the case. And in 84, we did see some individual releases that are actually pretty rare these days of SPFX The Empire Strikes Back as standalone releases. One example being the UK. Another example being Australia. But the one thing that will drive people absolutely bonkers for the next several years, and then for collectors in years to come, from 1984, is a specific release of A New Hope, though Empire sort of falls into this category as well. A New Hope got yet another release in 1984. So we had the rental in 82, the retail in 82, a retail with CBS Fox video branding on it in 83, with the two retail releases being in drawer boxes, and now to match The Empire Strikes Back, we have releases in these slim cases here in 1984, for A New Hope on VHS and on Beta. Again, basically the same packaging, but for Beta, a sticker on the side indicating that it is Beta, not VHS. And just to show you the inside, this one is actually intact. Again, it's just kind of thicker cardboard and a little bit of a frame inside there, basically to make sure that your Beta cassette isn't going to smash around on the inside and get damaged or anything. But what's going to drive people nuts in years to come is actually two things, really. One is that this era's releases of A New Hope and of The Empire Strikes Back have, of course, a 1984 copyright date. Of course they do. They came out in 84. But in subsequent releases, all the way up until the next big releases in 1990 for the full trilogy, we're going to find that the same packaging is being reused over and over again. And the packaging design has a copyright date of 1984, and that tends to be the date that continues year to year to year. So you will constantly see people trying to sell copies from 86, 87, 88, 89-ish as if they were copies from 84 because of the packaging design copyright date on the packaging. What really sucks is that at least for Empire, there's no way really to tell the difference between 84 and onward until 1990. And the case for A New Hope is actually a little bit easier, but still a little bit of a mess. Though I would note that some of the later releases do have a little holographic dot on the back, as we'll see in years to come, so there is some ability to distinguish later, but not if you're looking at the front cover. Suffice to say, with A New Hope, there is an extra wrinkle, and that wrinkle is that if you look at this packaging, there is a red triangle in the corner. Notice that it says Hi-Fi Stereo. Notice the side. It says Hi-Fi Stereo. That is a copy from 1984. We will see that in 1985, there'll be some digitally remastering being done of the audio for A New Hope, such that when it gets re-released in 1986, it'll still have the hi-fi stereo, but it'll also say digitally mastered on the side and in the triangle. It is a different version of the film with an updated audio track. So there is a distinction of the red triangle A New Hope releases, depending on whether it says digitally mastered or not, which also, again, leads to some confusion for a while. We'll talk about that more when we get to 1986. Beyond that, the way that we'll be able to tell these different releases apart when they are so similar looking over the years is only if you put them in a player. For example, early copies of The Empire Strikes Back tend to also have a trailer at the end for the home video release of A New Hope. Eventually, we'll see releases where after the film with no real visual fanfare, just an opening narration over black uh, background. Uh, we have a lead-in and then a 10th anniversary trailer for the trilogy. And then later we have a 10th anniversary trailer for the trilogy at the beginning of the cassettes with a little visual kind of poorly animated introduction to it with effectively similar audio. Um, but you can't tell these differences unless you actually look at the product itself and actually get a chance to open it and put it in a player. It's really kind of tricky trying to get all the different versions of A New Hope and Empire and eventually Return of the Jedi from this period of about 1984 until about 1989. Um, though at least for A New Hope, there's an easy way to tell if your copy is from 84 because that's the one without digitally mastered on it. 
Again, more about that when we get to 1986. But before we get there, we still have another year in between. Come back next time as we check out 1985.